Welcome back to the lab. Uh, new today on the bench is the latest acquisition for my personal lab. This is my third shot at trying to get one of these curved tracers. The other two had problems. I don't know what we're going to get into with this one. I got this taken out of the box and set on the bench. Uh, first impressions are it needs cleaning. Um, haven't even opened it up yet, so we'll see what uh, what we're getting into. Serial number leads me to believe we're not going to run into a sore spot on this one, which my one of my other ones had, and the listing for this one also showed mm. a pretty strong tube. So we'll see what we can uh, get into and see what we can figure out. Uh, haven't even turned it on yet, so what I'm going to do is I will uh, go ahead and get this turned sideways, and we'll get in there, and we'll see if it has the... Um, sore spot in it or if we got lucky and then depending on what we find there we'll continue with a complete restoration cleaning cleaning the switches then doing an alignment on this these particular curve tracers have a special uh, alignment fixture you need to use with them the good news is i actually happen to have one of those so we'll see what we get into i have no idea what electrical problems we'll get into on this unit but let me get the uh, side panel off, and I'll talk about one of the sore spots with these things. Okay, I have the left side panel removed, and what that ex exposes on this unit is the high-voltage supply, main collector supply, absolutely massive transformer under here. It says, I don't know if you guys can read that, it says danger lethal voltages. That's not to be taken lightly in this unit. That transformer will produce 1,600 volts, put it the collector the collector pins so when I get to the front of the unit I'll talk a little bit more about that the source spot first source spot I'm gonna check is underneath this cover high voltage transformer in these is known to leak and that will drag down the power supply so if you have one of these units that's oscillating off on off on off on high voltage transformer may have gone leaky we'll see if this is the good one if this is the good one I actually still have the old high voltage transformer from my other unit because my other unit is a very early serial number. Let me get this cover taken off real quick and we will see what the... Actually, let me just do that on camera. We'll just get this cover removed and we will see what kind of transformer we have in there. Okay, so let's see what the high voltage section looks like. And we have the good transformer. I was pretty sure this unit was going to have the good T850 due to the fact of the serial number. Said that this was one of the units that should have had it. The transformer in question is this guy right here. The old style transformer looks like this. It has this brown epoxy material on it. Uh, these epoxy potted transformers, at least in my observations, it seems to be thermal related. Uh, when these get hot, they have a high leakage current and it just over overwhelms the power supply and causes the unit to go into protect mode and shut down. And that uh, uh, that's a sore spot. Uh, you cannot find these transformers. Uh, one of the guys on the Techscopes forums, he actually made a new one, or had a new one commissioned, a modern one that got made. Haven't tested that yet, but I did buy a couple just because I I really want one of these curve tracers for the lab, and I wanted some spare parts. But if you need T850, you will not be able to find it. Good luck. From what everybody's told me and all the research that I've done so far, this black rubber potted transformer doesn't have the same leakage problems as the 
epoxy potted one. Just looking at this board, eh, it looks like we may have a little bit of need a little bit of cleaning on that guy. That socket's a little crusty. Um, but all in all, this board actually looks to be in very good condition. Um, space out these capacitors just a little bit. So that all looks good. Very dusty unit, but internally looks real good. Let me get it flipped around. I'll get this cover plate put back on because I don't want to fire up the high voltage section without the cover plate on. There's negative 4,000 volts right here. Um, by the way, the unit is off, has been off for a very long time. All the capacitors are drained and discharged, so it's safe to put a finger in there. But don't do that while the unit's on. There's negative 4,000 volts right there. There's 1,600 volts in here. The unit will actually source 1,600 volts to the front panel. So if you get one of these, just be careful. Those could be lethal voltages. So what I'll do is I'll get the cover put back on here, and then we'll flip the unit around and take a look at the other side. This piece of gear is just humongous. Barely fits on my uh, anti-static mat. This is the other side of the 576. So what we have here is we have vertical current per division. We have display offset board, volts per division. We have step generator amplitude. The other thing is collector voltages can show up on some of these boards. So especially if the unit's on and you're working on it, take care. There's high voltage everywhere in this thing. One of the other sore spots is these relays. The ones that are Tektronics branded, from what I've heard, haven't aged well. Some of those might be a little flaky. Uh, this actually still has the uh, roll of silver solder in it from the Tektronics factory. Let's see, this is the low voltage power supply over here. Uh, a lot of the power supply test tap offs heat on these pins right here. The main rectifiers, the diodes for the rectifiers are on a separate board behind here. This power supply can be interesting to work on because it's, it's two layers of board plus all of these plus the pass elements on the back of the unit back here. So they can be kind of strange to work on. Back hiding under here is a um, one of the main transformers for the unit, which goes up probably to about here down. It's one of the main transformers. There's another massive transformer behind this board on the other side of the unit. That's what makes shipping these things so difficult. They, uh, they're just heavy. Uh, this unit, I think, weighs 70 pounds not when it's packaged up for shipping. So they're big, they're bulky, they make them difficult to ship. What I'm gonna have to do is I'll probably have to pull a couple of these boards off, at least to get access to the switches. All the switches on here need to be cleaned. We'll do that with isopropyl alcohol. Let's see, what else do I gotta do before I turn this thing on? Not too much. I mean, everything looks to be in good shape. I don't see anything blown up, burned up, uh, or destroyed. I'll see if I can pull a date code off of some of the chips. See if I can get an idea when this one was made, and then I'll work on getting the front cleaned up. No, I think that's it. So uh, what I'll do is I'll start getting into cleaning some of the switches, cleaning the main variac. If anything interesting happens, I'll be back. Cleaned all the switches in the front panel. I'll turn it here in a second so I can talk about that. There's a few multibank switches that cause some problems in these units. It's one of the re it's especially the older they get. Ran into some trouble with the controls on the front panel. This particular unit was sold as controls needed cleaning. What actually was going on was the controls were pretty mushy. I found out none of the, con uh, half the controls on the front weren't even lined up with where they were supposed to go. So I had to take all the knobs off, realign the controls, and I'll talk about that process. One of the controls that's an absolute sore spot with these units did give me a bit of trouble. Fortunately, it wasn't too bad on this one. Uh, and I'll show you guys what I had to replace. I had to replace one of the um, gear reductions on one of the 10-turn pots. The way I clean the switches, clean everything with isopropyl alcohol, but MG has aerosolized 99.9% .9 isopropyl alcohol. Uh, this video is not sponsored by an MG. I just found this recently. 
and I use it. I like the pressure that comes out of here uh, when you spray. It's got a decent amount of pressure behind it, so you can actually get it into switches and actually get some switches cleaned up. So it's been doing a good job so far. Like I said, I haven't been using this for very long. I'll probably buy at least a couple more cans of this stuff. While I'm waiting for the uh, alcohol to flash off that I've sprayed into the switches this morning, uh, I'll go ahead and turn the unit, and then I'll talk about what I ran into on the front controls. And taking a look at the front of the unit, this piece of paper is just cutting some glare down. One of my pot lights behind me is at exactly the wrong angle. I'll move this out of the way real quick. That giant bright spot in the middle of the screen. So a piece of paper is not hiding anything. It's just getting the glare off the camera. So these are the switches that I clean with alcohol. Uh, there's three three layers of the boards. The straw and the uh, aerosolized alcohol really helps getting in there to clean those out. This in particular is the switch that causes um, a lot of grief with the uh, CRT. This is hooked very closely to the drive plates of the CRT. On my original 576, uh, that switch was dirty and it was actually causing a no trace condition. Uh, so not saying that's the only reason you'll get no trace, but if this switch is dirty, you will definitely have some problems with display. The way I found it was I hit the switch and the trace just went absolutely crazy. Didn't show anything remotely close to sane. Make sure these, these sets of three switches are clean. Cal is supposed to take it to, a, to 10 divisions. Tracer is set up correctly. If you hold zero, it'll take it to your origin point, whether it's here, here, the center. If you, if you hit cow, it'll take it to 10 divisions, so it'll take it all the way across the screen. That's when everything's set up and in balance correctly. So these two directly influence the drive of the CRT. This one inverts the CRT, so if you're doing PNP tracing, the point would usually start up here and come down, but you can hit invert, which will make it down here, so you can reference everything to the bottom corner. One of the other sore spots with these is this plastic ring right here. If this plastic is cracked off, there's a metal leaf on the back that holds the potentiometer here. Also, the unit's off. Don't rest your hands on here when it's in operation. This is actually the business end. This plastic ring, a big sore spot in these, there's a metal leaf that holds the pot to the back of the panel. But the ring, the lip on the ring right here, is actually what's holding the potentiometer in place. If this cracks, this thing falls into the case and just flops around loose. I have not found a good replacement for that yet. Fortunately, this one was cracked but has been glued and was in a good enough shape. The other thing is the way this drive works, it's press fit up against this back ring, but there's a little bit of a spacer, no washer, no nothing. There's a, there's a step out on the back of this ring that allows the outer ring of the reduction to turn because I got to get to point one, two, three. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's got to, it's got to allow that outer ring to turn. And if it doesn't, it just jams up the whole mechanism. This was another, um, one of the controls I had to replace. This mechanism was the outer ring mechanism was jammed up and wasn't working correctly. Now this one's unique to the curve tracer because it has this locking lever on it. The oscilloscopes have a similar control, but it doesn't have this locking lever for you to lock it so this can't turn. So that one's unique to the curve tracers. I haven't seen any other equipment so far that has that locking lever on it. So that one's a unique control that can kind of be a sore spot in these. Uh, this one, the number of steps control worked pretty well. This was mangled, so the shaft was actually destroyed on this one. So I had actually had to replace the metal shaft that's behind that control, which you have to remove the step generator or the horizontal division boards to get to. So I got that one replaced last night. That one moves nicely and positively now, so it's not sliding around and mushy anymore. These are just CRT position controls. These. Both the step generator and the horizontal volts per division control were not aligned properly. So the way I did it was I turn them all the way to their extreme counterclockwise position and then just line up the knob with the extreme most counterclockwise setting. Um, 
This one had a bit of shaft damage on it. Metal's been gouged out. There's a nice groove in it. This one was okay. Fortunately, the display offset control didn't need help. The uh, vertical current per division did need, did need lined up. Intensity and focus were fine. This is another control that if, they're, if these machines are stored in sunlight and things like that, this knob can actually get weak and crack. And if that happens, this can be a real nightmare to try to source the part and get the control fixed because it's a two-stage control. When it's in like this, you can adjust the collector voltage, and this is moving just fine, and it's lined up. But then you can pull it out and adjust a series resistor for the given voltage. So I can set it to 350 volts and limit it to half a watt by putting in a series resistor in the correct position. And then if, if this control internally cracks, it can be kind of a nightmare to source a new one. My the one unit that I had that was stored in a, I'm pretty sure it was stored in a garage. It, this got destroyed by the sun. Readout illumination and graticule illumination, those worked okay. That's, they're just tied directly to a pot behind the, behind the panel. Cleaned up the uh, front porch, which is this. Um, these are actually removable. So this is the standard test fixture. I'm looking for one of the pulsed high current ones but they just snap in there. This is also where the calibrator goes. The calibrator has a whole front front porch that just sits there, but I'll bring that out when it's time. So, there's that. A variable collector supply. I still need to clean this. So, that one's kind of a cool control. I'll do that on camera. Uh, I have to flip the unit sideways and I actually, you actually have to get at this from the bottom. So it's cleaning up real nice. Some of the controls are cracked. I'm not sure how long they're going to last. It originally didn't have a collector supply. I got a new knob for that. Got this guy all squared away. Um, this, is, this is cracked pretty badly. I'm not sure how long that control is going to last, so I'll keep an eye out for a new polarity knob. But yeah, that's where we're at after the first cleaning. It's looking pretty good. Got a little bit more I need to clean up down there. And then once the alcohol flashes off, we'll be able to fire it up do some power supply tests, and then hopefully go through an alignment. Okay, why curve tracers are so hard to ship and why they have so many warnings. This guy, this guy, and this guy. <laughs> These transformers are just massive. This is where most of the weight is in the unit. This is also why this unit can output 1500 volts to the collector. This transformer and working on this transformer is no joke. I had to rebuild the high voltage supply in one of the other ones that I tried to repair. It's heavy, it's awkward, lots of iron, and it puts out 1600 volts. Definitely not something to take lightly. This is the main transformer for the unit. There is nine secondary voltages created by this transformer, so if either one of these transformers go bad, it's you're going to be hard to find another one. The reason I had to take the bottom off is there was still a little bit of packing peanuts and stuff like that that was in there. So I wanted to get them out and clean the bottom panel. And I also want to clean this guy. So the way the uh, collector supply works is 110 from the or wall voltage comes into the um, to this small variac. This small variac then drives this transformer. On top of this transformer, there's um, two different rectifiers. Uh, one's the low voltage rectifier, the other one's the 1600 volt rectifier. The low voltage, the 1575 and 350 volts. High voltage rectifier handles the 1400 volts. These warnings are not to be uh, ignored if this thing's plugged in, especially if it's turned on. This transformer can source a lot of current. It's not something you want to come across. Um, what I have to do under here is clean off the wiper. If you're working on one of these, just know line voltage appears on this on this variac, and at these points, this is all 110 up in here, straight from the wall. This circuit breaker is actually for uh, just the collector supply if it ever overranges and shorts out. So I'll zoom in on this, and then I'll get some uh, Q-tips and some alcohol, and we'll just clean up the contact on that, and then I'll get the rest of the packing peanuts out of here. Actually, this does not look bad at all. This is more indication that this unit is low time. This is just um, 
isopropyl alcohol, just some 99%. Just trying to get the black off. Just being careful not to damage the wiper. Eh, a little bit dirty. Just gonna work on getting this carbon off. Yeah, I don't think this unit's been used much at all. There's not much on there. Usually one that has really high time on it, this has been run around, because this is how you control the uh, test voltage on the front of the unit. So it's usually been swept back and forth quite a bit, unless they're set to set it and forget it. So I, this is another indication that this unit has not been in use for very long. which is kind of what I've seen by looking at these and buying these online. The um, You either get two options. One is the unit has barely been used and tested a few devices and then was usually put on the shelf or something, or you get one that has just been, has thousands and thousands of hours on it. I actually have two tubes, hundreds or thousands of hours on them. They're, just, they're weak. Um, and the problem with weak tubes in these is the 576, the tube is unique. No other Tektronix device actually used the 576 tube. So sourcing another tube is all but impossible. Um, partly because of the cost of this unit. Uh, this unit is was very expensive. And I'm sure it was very expensive for Tech to make, just given the way it's constructed. That feels real good. Yeah, there's nothing crunchy on there. carbon from the brush actually acts as a lubricant on here as well. So you don't want to clean it off all the way. So I'd say that's good. I'm going to let this dry while I uh, wipe down the um, bottom panel. Then I'll get the bottom panel put back on. And then I actually think we're ready to turn it on, do some preliminary testing because I think I at least for the first pass I have all the mechanical stuff done. I'll get this all put back together and we will uh, see if it'll fire up. No smoke. Okay, I've got the bottom reassembled. I've got some meters set up. What I'm monitoring now is I am, this fluke is gonna have current on it. This clamp fluke is just monitoring the AC line voltage. I have the Keithley over there set up to monitor the negative 75 volt rail, which in this particular unit is the main reference. Controls are down, illuminations down, NPN 15 volts, one step, everything's all there, collectors down, steps, rep, normal rate, inverts out, 
Yeah, I think that's it. Let's go ahead and see. Uh, let me check the low voltage supply real quick. All the alcohol has flashed off. So let's go ahead and turn it on and see what happens. I have to turn the supply on. Okay, 120 volts. Well, relay's fired. That's a good sign. Give it a minute to warm up. Only drawing about a half an amp. Uh, so that's good. At full power, this thing will draw about three amps. So half an amp is perfectly normal. Oh, we can light up the uh, can light up the graticule. So that's good. Readouts waking up. So that's good. Let's see if we can get a trace. We'll set this to step generator 0.2 microamps. Uh, horizontal volts per division. Uh, we'll set it to collector volts per division of 2. Zero vertical current per division, 20 milliamps. We will give it a little bit of brightness. And we don't have anything on the screen. Anywhere. Okay. Flip it over to AC. Oh. Beam is. I see it. We have some beam, but. Okay, it is very high. Yeah, my... Hmm. We have a beam. Okay, so we have a little bit of signs of life. So it should not be moving right now. It should be stable. So I have to look into that. Yeah, it just moved off the screen. So something is still... Yeah, something's out with the uh, some of the amplifiers so I'm getting some weird signals into the tube but the good news is the tube lit up Okay, so we're getting very, very bright traces on the on the display. So the display is working very well. Okay, that's good. move that there.
yeah, there's something way off in one of the amplifiers. It's off in the weeds, because if I hit zero, it should line up here. And if I hit cal, it should line up. Uh, let's see. My negative 75 volt rail is pretty stable at 74.8, so that's okay. But we still have some sick issues in the in somewhere. So let me spend some time with some of the schematics and see what I can figure out. Okay, well I haven't had to break out the schematics yet, but I did get some good news. Uh, if I turn the intensity up, I gotta be careful the side panels off. But if I turn the intensity up, it's spot is actually right here, so I can bring that up. So I can actually bring it up, zero the spot, and if I hit zero, the spot goes away, but it goes down a little bit. So there's my zero, and if I let go of the zero, but I can now zero the instrument. So if I let go of the zero, spot moves up here. That can be an indication of amplifiers being out of adjustment, but earlier in the video I said these switches can be problematic. If I just take this, See, if I move that, the spot bounces up and down. And if I move the zero up and down, the spot moves up and down. And if I invert it, well, if I invert, the spot goes up here, which is it's supposed to. That's a nice positive. Like, it's not moving very much. So I may actually have to get in and I may have to pull the horizontal off again and service this. Nah, just tapping it doesn't do it. But if I touch the switch at all, I can get it to bounce around. See, if I tap the zero, it doesn't move. But if I tap the cow, it bounces around pretty good. So uh, I've either still got a dirty switch or i got a faulty switch. So I will keep digging around to figure that out. But if I hit this, so I can properly zero the, I can properly zero the curve tracer, which is good. I can't, so if I hit cal, it'll fly way up here, but the spot goes off the screen, but I can bring it down, but see how noisy the spot is? Bring this down just a little bit. I'm, I'm holding cal, I'm not moving it, and the spot's jumping around like crazy, so may still have a bad cal switch, not quite sure yet, but that should be stable at the top corner of the display. So obviously we have a fault in those switches. Um, they deal with the drive plates of the CRT. These are problematic switches in this unit. So I'm gonna keep going. I'll hit that with alcohol some more. Um, exercise the contact, see if I can't clean that up. If we can't clean that up, we will have to replace the switch. So we'll go from there because I can bring this back to zero, and it'll zero, but then even the zero doesn't go. So, But what that tells me so so far is the listing on the, the good thing is when I'm not touching the switches, it's actually stable again. But what that tells me so far is the listing was accurate. Um, this is out of cal. The balance on the vertical and horizontal amplifiers is not correct. So I'm going to need to, um, I was planning on it anyway, but once this thing is done, I will need to do a full calibration on it and to get it serviceable for the bench. Now the good news is I put a tiny pencil mark. So that's zero intensity. So there's the pencil mark right there at the bottom of the switch. So if I just turn it up to where it's visible, So I have, I now have a trace, but I'm, I'm less than half of the intensity of the tube, and that's actually a very bright trace. So the tube looks like it is very healthy, which is good, because these tubes, you can't find them. But what the curve tracer is supposed to do, I have it set to 15 volts. Collector voltage on the horizontal is um, 2 volts of division. If I wind up the 
variac on the bottom, or the, uh, the variable collector supply. If I turn that up, line should trace this way on the screen. We don't have any current, so it's not going to go up, but I turn up the intensity a little bit. We have a line, which is good. Now, the weird thing is we have a line that is tilted down, which would actually indicate negative resistance. So that's strange. Um, obviously, this is very much out of alignment due to the negative resistance. But let me get a uh, test fixture in here, pop a resistor in there, and just see if we get a diagonal line, which would indicate resistance, which would at least indicate some functionality of the curve tracer. Okay, so I just grabbed a random 33K resistor out of my stock of parts. Uh, we'll turn up the intensity a little bit. Again, not trying to take a measurement or anything, just doing a basic functionality check. Going to flip this over to the left test point. This is the diode checker, but the diode checker can be used for any uh, two-terminal device. So you can test resistors, capacitors, things like that with it. And if I turn this up... Let's raise the voltage. Oh, uh, vertical current by per division is real low. So we'll go to point. So what we're going to measure is point 0.1 milliamps. Oh, and turning that made that go way up. So, yep, this is going to need alignment. But, yep, there we go. So, back this down a little bit. So now we're going to look at 0.5 milliamps per division. So, for measurement's sake, if I was, every division is supposed to be half a milliamp. So if I just spin the collector voltage, we now have a positive tilt on the line, which means we're flowing current through the resistor, which means that is actually functioning normally can't trust the measurement right now because everything's way off but it looks good so apparently the uh being out of cal on the listing was very accurate this thing's this is the worst one i've gotten delivered in terms of measurement capabilities honestly which is good i mean the whole point was to go through it completely and get it fixed trace is stable it's not drifting around anymore that's a very positive sign tube is very healthy cool so what i'm gonna do is i'll power this back down i'll hit these switches with some more alcohol uh, let them exercise. Then I got to wait about an hour or so to let the alcohol flash off because when it's in the switch, it doesn't evaporate very fast. Um, at this point, three major issues that usually kills one of these. We've gotten through those, so everything at this point should be repairable. Sorry for the uh, shaky camera. There's no way I could have shown this angle with a tripod. I was uh, troubleshooting the power supply yesterday on the 576. And I found out the um, variable 4.5 volt rail and the 5 volt rail were low. Did a uh, ripple check with a scope. I'll cut that into the video. It's ripples pretty bad on that one. The I'm suspecting the um, bulk filter cap is uh, not working. These are the two low voltage rectifier boards. There's the one rectifier board. This is the rectifier board that hides behind that board. Well, I'm sorry. This is the rectifier board. This is the regulator board for the scope. The capacitor of interest is That guy all the way at the bottom. Focus. There we go. That guy all the way at the bottom. Um, I'm going to have to pull these boards out to get to it. Hopefully I don't have to pull the tube to get to that because the tube is on the other side and uh, it might interfere with getting these, getting these caps out. But I think if I do them all at the same time, I can uh, work from either the top or the bottom and get them out without taking the tube out. I hope. So I'm in for a challenge, which isn't too bad. I also, uh, once I get back on the tripod, I found one other issue with the uh, low voltage rectifier board that I'll show you guys. So let me put the camera back on the tripod and I'll be right back.
Okay, this is the low voltage rectifier board. Um, one of the things that makes this particular unit kind of interesting is there's lots of diode sets for the individual power rails. They actually tap off the transformer and each rail gets rectified on its own. But when I was moving this around to check the capacitor, I found this pin right here, which is uh, why it's loose. This is this is super loose. I I move I move the board and it just fell off. So at this point, I am sure somebody has had a go at this unit before me, given the condition of the controls in the front and a few other things. But uh, but yeah, this is just super super loose. Let's see if I can. This is taking just it just falls off. So I'll have to address that when I put this all back together. So I made an Excel document with a color map uh, so I can hook this board back up in the right way. But what I'm hoping I can do is unplug all of these, fold the board out this way, and that'll get me access to the capacitors in the back. Um, given how much of a project it is to get to these capacitors and the likelihood if you have to change one in the middle of removing the tube, I will probably change just change over all of them and get them done. Uh, the other thing that's makes the particular capacitor of interest a nightmare to get to is it's it's a de it's got a lot of ground points that go to it. So I'm gonna have to rehook those back up and get those running again. So I will get into that and then bring you guys back if anything else interesting happens. Okay, I have the capacitor out of circuit. I've got my IT11 hooked up to it. So I'm going to just do a double check. I hooked a ohm meter up to it real quick and it measured 22 mega ohm. So just going to do a leakage test on this capacitor real quick. I checked the spec. This particular capacitor is supposed to be good for 15 volts. So I have the I tube set to 15 volts. I don't know if you guys can see the I tube, but if this doesn't open, I get to go digging. So it's in leakage and you guys can't see that. So let me move the camera. Sorry about the shaky cam. My angles are real bad, but I'll click it down into leakage. And we have focus. There we go. We have a bad capacitor. So I get to go have some fun. At least that one needs to be swapped out. I don't know about the rest of them, but uh, these capacitors are pretty high value in terms of capacitance. 759, which is the one we're testing, is 11,000 microfarads at 15 volts. So these are pretty large for capacitors, but tolerances are plus 100, minus 10%, so it could be 22,000. Let me see what I have in stock. As long as I have something of an appropriate uh, rating and voltage, I will uh, see what we can do by getting some of these swapped out. Okay, I am just about halfway through exposing the capacitors. Um, given that the capacitor that I need to replace is all the way at the very bottom of the stack, and there is no real room to work on these things without taking the tube out, I did have to remove the tube from the unit. I did not do that on camera due to risks associated with removing the tube, safety glasses and gloves, and the fact that these tubes are, the, the specific tube for this unit is extremely rare and if I dropped it or broke it or tripped over the camera or something it's irreplaceable especially it being a good tube. I've tried to get a couple of extra tubes for these because I have a parts unit for one of these. The extra tubes that I've gotten they've all been had way too much time on them so they've done a double ramp where you turn up the intensity knob gets brighter then it falls off then it gets brighter again and when they do that they're they're uh, they either need rejuvenation or they're just done. But the problem is, if they're done, there is no replacement. So unless you can source a tube from a parts unit or something like that, it's a brick. What I'll do is I'll get it flipped around. i got to pull the tube cage out now. So the risky part's done. To store the tube, the tube is way back in my storage room. 
It's wrapped in a blanket. It's on the very bottom shelf all the way in the back. So nothing's going to fall on it. Nothing's going to hit it. Nobody's going to trip over it. It's safe while it's out of the curve tracer. I'll get the tube shroud pulled out. That'll expose the capacitors. Given that uh, it is this much work to replace these trilytics, I'll actually be replacing all of them. Uh, and I'm going to overrate them. They're going to be at least twice their rated voltage. I think the oh, the one cap that I did find, uh, it's in a 5-volt rail, and it's a 25-volt capacitor. So they're actually not small still. This is 1,800 microfarads. The spec calls for 11, but with a tolerance of plus 100, minus 10. So anything under 22 thousand will be fine so i'm gonna do 25 volt and i'll figure out what all the rest of them are see what i have in stock and if i have to order something i'll have to order something but we're keeping going this is turning into a very in-depth rebuild but no big deal so but what i'll probably do is given the fact that this unit that this is getting um into being a long video i will probably rebuild the unit and then i'll do a second second video on calibration of the unit after everything's all fixed so let me uh, get the tube shroud out. I'll flip the unit around and show you the bulk capacitors and why they're such a pain. Okay, here we are on the other side of the unit. Uh, I've got everything turned around. I'll pull the camera off the tripod here in a minute and do a top-down view so you guys can see behind the shield and the collector supply and the high-voltage section. Um, the This piece, essentially, this giant... CRT shield, move this back a little bit, this thing, which obviously is huge, slides in this way, comes all the way back in, actually clamps in the back. This is the uh, uh, yoke connector for the um, CRT. Uh, these are the deflection pins, uh, vertical and horizontal. What we've got here is readout board, interface for the readout board. This this is on a uh, from here forward it's on a cartridge to slide out getting to this board if if any of these transistors ever go bad is kind of a pain in the butt and the capacitors i'm interested in are right here actually you can't even see the one i got to replace because it's even below here I'm not taking the high voltage supply off i got room to work So here we are looking down into the collector supply. This is the top side of that transformer. Some real nice precision resistors. Uh, if you ever have to work in here, be real careful. This is a ceramic resistor in the gig ohm range. So it's actually pretty fragile. This is the temperature sensor. The wafer switches for the collector and the series resistors. There's the back side of all the settings in the front. Close up of the readout board. The troublemaker that required all this work to happen is right there. So that guy down at the bottom is the one I have to replace. This is the bulk filter for the 5-volt rail. But since I have to take tube out, get this far into the unit to replace them, I'm going to replace all of these, including the high-voltage cap on the back side of the high-voltage board. So we'll go from there. Um, and see how it goes. Repairs progressing. I did not expect this to be this extensive of a rebuild, but uh, you never know when you get into it. Nothing we can't handle, but longer than I expected, because I am going to have to order some of these parts. So let me get the unit flipped around, get the capacitor numbers, and then I'll uh, put in a digi key order through the magic of the camera. I'll have to wait. You guys won't. Okay, here's the other side of the unit with all the capacitors put back in. The tube's still out. It's in this section here. These are the caps that I had to replace. There's a couple more to go further down behind here, but caps, actually, there's everything down there. So that's everything that got replaced. Just figured I'd show a quick shot of where I was at without the tube in. Next step I got to put in, I got to put in the enclosure, which then has the tube clamp. So I got to get the enclosure and the tube back in. That's next on the list. Okay, I am at the tail end of capacitor replacement to talk a little bit about assembly that I've made, get these capacitors replaced. Next time this is done, these will be a lot easier because now the uh, wires aren't tied to the cap, they're tied to this interface board. So this is one of the purple boards that's right here. So what this is, is the cap ties into here, 
positive side of the cap goes to the two center pins. Negative side of the cap goes to the rest of the ground plane. It's, it's actually all around. So what I did was I took some 14 gauge wire, pulled some red forks, the insulation off the red forks to make that, crimped them onto the wire, then I actually soldered that connection. Then I put those forks all the way up against the board like this. And then I soldered that connection and I and, and I needed five of these per five of those per board because you need four on the outside and one in the center. So I needed five of these per board to go to the center, so center and then the four corners. This plastic piece actually came off of the old capacitor and this plastic piece also came off of the old capacitor. This is what actually held the old capacitor into the 576. You can see the lock nut uh, marks on the plastic. Don't exactly know what this plastic is. I had to enlarge these holes just a little bit. So what I did was I used scroll saw blade with one of the pins cut off, did it by hand, and then I used a pin file to file out the hole, the rest of it. I don't know what this is made out of. This was also made back in the 60s. So I have no idea what this is made for. So fume hood extracting dust. So don't know what the dust is. Didn't want to breathe it. Also wore a respirator while I was cutting this and grinding on it. Uh, washed it off with alcohol before I took the respirator off. So to keep it all safe and everything like that. What it looks like when they're installed is... These are what they look like when they're installed. So the forks are the tie points. The fork connectors I also had to cut shorter so they didn't short to the back of the board. But it's what's holding the capacitor in and what's also making the electrical connections because the outer ring is negative, the center is positive. So the capacitor itself is actually this pin and this pin. So if these ever need to be replaced again, I can just desolder the capacitor from the board, pop it out the back of the unit, put a new cap in, and I don't actually have to mess with any of this cabling again for getting this done. So uh, in the future, if this ever needs to be recapped again, this would be a nice solution to the filter problem. Uh, let's see, what else have I done while everything's all torn apart? I tested some of these white capacitors. These are actually poly capacitors, so these actually show no leakage. So these are these don't need to be replaced. I will probably replace the electrolytics on the other board. But what I'm going to do right now is get this last capacitor, which goes right there, replaced, uh, and then get the uh, rectifier board wired back up and at least test the power supply. Make sure my, my ripple's gone. The reason we had to do all this is because of some ripple on the power supply to make these little capacitor boards. That's about an hour, hour's worth of work per capacitor to get everything sized, built, attached, done. So just in replacing these capacitors in this unit, there's about eight hours worth of work. So everything looks good. Going to get this last one in and we'll see what happens. Okay, here's the other side of the unit with all the capacitors put back in. Tube's still out. It's in this section here. These are the caps that I had to replace. There's a couple more to go further down behind here, but um, there are the caps. Actually, there's everything down there. So that's everything that got replaced. Just figured I'd show a quick shot of where I was at without the tube in. Next step I gotta put in, I gotta put in the enclosure, which then has the tube clamp. So I gotta get the enclosure and the tube back in. That's next on the list. Okay, uh, here we are back at the bench. Through the magic of the camera, I've three days have passed. So I had to wait to get the uh, parts shipped in, uh, the new capacitor shipped in, and then uh, the capacitors that you see in the front of the bench, those, uh, each one took about an hour to do. Everything looks good. I have uh, reassembled the scope, put the tube back in. Everything looks pretty good so far. Uh, the good news is, if I turn the intensity up, I had the scope on, no, uh, no fireworks. 
so that's good. Spot, pretty close to the middle. Curve tracer, or while the tube was out, I showered the switches and everything like that with alcohol. The aerosolized stuff, just straight isopropyl. Exercised them quite a bit, cleaned them up. And so that looks really good. Uh, where I'm at right now is the uh, curve tracer is put back together. Everything looks good. I readjusted the knobs, got everything centered. Had to fix this. This knob actually had a busted shaft on it. I had to replace the shaft on it. Um, this part was fine. This number of steps or um, current limit was not correct. Replaced all these capacitors that are down at the bottom. These are the bulk filters. Tested some of the capacitors in the power supply. Uh, everything else tested okay. Found those poly caps on the rectifier board. Those tested to an ex to extremely low leakage capacitor tester. Got everything set up. Turn this down so it doesn't burn the screen in. Uh, got the screen cleaned up. Used just some more alcohol on it. Everything looked good. Got everything cleaned up on the inside. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to let it just let the unit warm up. I've had the meter and the scope on for a while. And what I'll do is I'm going to go through the power supply and check ripple. Check my voltages. Just make sure they're okay adjust what's necessary did check the 5 volt rail i was missing half a volt on the 5 volt rail that is now 5 volts so tearing the power supply down and replacing the capacitors was worth the effort that's what the problem was there thanks for stopping by the lab today this is a final shot of for the curve tracer video repair these are all the bulk filters that i had to uh, replace this little guy um, I started doing a calibration and I ran into this high voltage capacitor. This guy was bad, so he's loose in there, so I had to replace him also. If there's interest in seeing the calibration procedure, I did get that on film, but this video is getting long. I was editing it down, it's over an hour already, so I'm going to split the calibration and the repair into two separate videos. Hope you guys enjoyed and taking a look at a 576, we'll see what comes across the bench next.